I am obsessed with the weather. This is an absolutely true fact. I probably should have been a meteorologist. But then I wouldn't be hosting these super cool videos, so I guess that's okay. So in this Chalk Talk, we will be bringing just a little bit of my love of everything weather into electronic engineering. How so? With barometric pressure sensors. Sure, you probably know about sensing barometric pressure in terms of weather. But did you know that barometric pressure sensors can be very valuable in many different electronic designs as well? Including wearables, navigation, industrial applications, and even clog detection? It's true. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Dr. Thomas Block from Bosch Sensor Tech and I investigate the benefits of barometric pressure sensors for a variety of electronic designs. We examine how the ultra-low power consumption, excellent accuracy, and suitability for use in harsh environments make Bosch's BMP585 barometric pressure sensors a great fit for your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Bosch Sensor Tech. Hi, Thomas. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks, Emilia. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Okay, so we're talking all about robust barometric pressure sensors today. But before we dig into the details and applications, can you give us an overview of exactly what a barometric pressure sensor is and the specific Bosch sensor tech products we'll be talking about? Sure. So in general, it's quite simple. A barometric pressure sensor detects atmospheric pressure. This output has traditionally been utilized in weather forecasting, altitude meters, and so on. So declining atmospheric pressure indicates worsening weather conditions and vice versa. So when a plane, for example, climbs to a higher altitude, atmospheric pressure decreases and in opposite increases when the plane descends. So understanding this concept is essential to understand the use cases I will describe later. Air pressure measurement can be absolute, differential, or relative. So absolute pressure is measured relative to a vacuum. Second, the differential pressure is a difference in pressure between two different sources or locations. And third, the relative pressure is a differential pressure measured in relation to the ambient air pressure. So for practical use cases, differential or relative pressure is regularly used to derive the altitude or change in the vertical position of the sensor. So by comparing measured air pressure to known ambient pressure at sea level, we can calculate the altitude. And the here presented absolute pressure sensor BMP585 is not only best in class in terms of performance, but also very robust. So even 150 meter below water. So this is uh, almost 15 bar. When we come to the highlights, Bosch is a well-known leading supplier of robust gel field barometric pressure sensors. And it enables basically the capacitive sensing technology with a very robust package. So it addresses new use cases, especially in smartwatches and hearables. And the BMP585 is the best gel type sensor you can get for these battery driven devices, such as smartwatches, because it saves power due to its low current consumption at a very low noise level. High performance media robust waterproof package is a variant of the already released BMP581 because we see here already a very good performance with the BMP585. And this 585 has this improved MEMS and basically ASIC compared to BMP581. And now when you have this sensor, it's a metal lid gel type package. It can be also sealed to the outside with a radial O-ring on this organic substrate for waterproof applications. And this is a very small footprint. Excellent. So what would the actual measurement of this sensor look like? Yeah, 
So here we can see on the left side when you measure walking up and down stairs. So we are also showing here in this sketch on the left the difference between piezoassistive and capacitive sensor technology. So the new sensor is the blue curve here. It shows a very impressive performance. And how impressive this is, and especially due to the capacitive MEM sensor technology, you see on the right side, what means one stair? So one stair is 17.5 centimeter, which is roughly 2.1 Pascal, which corresponds to a mass difference of only 7.6 microgram of air for the pressure. So this is equivalent to one thousandth of a mass of a mosquito. And the sensor experiences a capacitance change of only 12.6 attofarad. There is only a charge difference of 60 electrons. So this is really impressive. So a big challenge in the wearable arena is robustness, right? But sometimes robustness can mean a compromise in performance. Yes, correct. We see a part of the market and customers have very high demands for robustness so that parametric pressure sensors in variables can also withstand water or other liquids. At the same time, they do not want to make compromises on performance. And especially new applications in the field of fitness require the highest accuracy with low noise like shown before. But until now, manufacturers and customers had to make compromises. So one of the reasons are here that the usage of gel on top of the sensor can have negative effects on the accuracy, like offset drift or temperature instabilities. And here we developed the BMP585, where you see a really unique solution and the same performance or sometimes better like the non-robust pressure sensors like BMP581. Okay, so let's talk about the BMP585. What do you think are the biggest benefits that this solution brings to the table? Yeah, first of all, it is suitable for this use in harsh environments. So if you use it in water, even in salt water or in chlorine water in a swimming pool, you can use it and even other chemicals can withstand our sensor. So the sensor is robust, but you need the correct integration concept. And you can see due to the low current consumption, it can be used continuously, and that's very important. So the improved sensor technology with the low current consumption is significantly lower than the previous generation and makes it possible for applications like battery-driven devices like smartwatches. And it is now addressing new use cases due to its excellent accuracy and very important for key products like smartwatches. Okay, so you talked about wearables earlier, but what other applications would this solution be a good fit for? So there are more products out there where you can use the BMP 5854. And there are interesting other markets like the industrial market where robustness is also key, but also many use cases in the home appliances like dishwasher, vacuum cleaner, or washing machine. Okay, so considering those applications, there must be a lot of different use cases where this solution would be good for. Correct. And here are the most important use cases as an overview. So there are the sport activity use cases in harsh environments. So we're talking about smartwatches, swimming, and so on. But also localization use case, navigation, and this mentioned industrial use case. There are also challenging atmospheric chemicals are present or some liquids which are very acid or challenging for use cases normally. But there is also the clock detection, for example, in a vacuum cleaner, and more details are shown in the following slides. Okay, so Thomas, how would this solution compare with a different kind of sensor, like a piezo-resistive sensor specifically? Yeah, so you see the advantages of BMP 585 with capacitive MEMS technology compared to the piezo-resistive sensor technology. We compare the current consumption, noise, TCO, and absolute accuracy, which is showing significant better performance for BMP 585 compared to the second best competitor, which is piezo-resistive technology or our previous generation of pressure sensors. So we see here the best-in-class sensor accuracy, and the numbers are really amazing. In detail, the current consumption compared to piezo-resistive technology is reduced by 80%. 
the noise is reduced by 85%, the TCO by 60%, and the absolute accuracy with the new BMP 585 is 50.5% less than the previous generation. And this makes it really impressive and suitable for new use cases based on this new ASIC package and MEMS technology. So do you have any further applications that this solution would be a good fit for? Yes. So here we see an overview of the use cases. I want to name block detection, auto mapping, fall down detection, fitness tracking enhancement, indoor localization or altitude stabilization in drones. And when we start with clock detection, you see here a nice puppy picture with a vacuum. So the BMP 585 is really here beneficial because there is a lot of dust in a vacuum cleaner. And therefore, the sensor is ideally suited for these home appliances. Because, for example, this vacuum cleaner, you maybe have sometimes clogging. The BMP 585 can detect it or even can detect if the bag is full and needs to be exchanged or removed. So, Thomas, can we talk in a bit more depth about the localization benefit you mentioned? Yeah. So, due to its very, very good accuracy, the BMP 585 provides reliable mapping data for distance traveling and meters of altitude for hiking or jogging trips. Normally, you see also now uh, there are some regulations, for example, in the U.S., that you need a very good indoor localization for emergency calls. So, when you call... E-991, for example. The problem is that rescue teams sometimes lack sufficient information where the caller is located. So when you have a smartphone or a wearable and you call from indoor, so traditional localization technologies are not working very efficiently, like GPS. And with the BMP 585 in a smartwatch, when you call someone, it's very helpful to have this device because right now the FCC requires wireless providers in the US to adapt the set access location accuracy metric. So you have to be localized in a huge building. So you have to have an absolute accuracy of plus minus three meters. And this will be solved, these new sensors. And we also have a cooperation with NextNav to offer solutions for 3D geolocation services. And that's very important. And the FCC estimates that this solution, more than 10,000 lives can be maybe saved with a pressure sensor and a suitable overall solution. And that's, I think, very important. That's great. Now, Thomas, let's also talk about navigation. What benefits are here as well? So navigation, or also can call it outdoor mapping. So especially when it's snowing or raining, these conditions are sometimes not so easy to withstand with a pressure sensor when it's not covered by this jail and when it's not robust. So it's very important that also in under harsh conditions, the sensor is working with a high accuracy. For example, when you navigate to a destination, that this information is reliable and quickly as possible. And that's what the BMP 585 can do. Also, when you use GPS, sometimes you're driving in a parking lot. GPS is not very reliable. And uh, there are GPS dead zones and sometimes the GPS signal is blocked. So you can not really receive altitude information. And here, the barometric pressure sensor is sometimes very important. Otherwise, indoor navigation is not working. It's really impossible. So the barometric pressure sensor only is able to detect the accurate altitude by measuring this air pressure and then can determine, for example, in which floor you are or where your car is in a parking garage. So that's very important. Floor level detection for indoor navigation and here you have endless possibilities to navigate people through shopping malls, and also airports or subway stations. And you can use it for fitness tracking as well. For example, how many floors you're walking during the day. And of course, Thomas, we should also talk about wearables in harsh conditions, right? Of course. Wearables, smartwatches, wearables, where also now introduction of pressure sensor is planned. You need to have a robust sensor to allow this unrestricted use for various sports activities such as swimming. Otherwise, the sensor would be maybe damaged, not working anymore, and you cannot really use it during swimming. So this is what the BMP 585 is enabling. 
you see the use case is measuring the relative height changes from multiple pressure sensors located on your body parts. For example, you can have earbuds, you can have smartwatches, and uh, the sensor requirements to really track your body motion for this pull-up. And here we need the BMP585 because the sensor requirements are very strict. So you need a very low power consumption, you need really low drifts, and this very accurate dynamic height change of only a few centimeters. So that's very important. So the combination of low noise and low current consumption, TCO makes it suitable for this body motion tracking applications. And the second example is doing other sports activities. And sometimes you maybe have it on your smartwatch. You want to count these activities during sports. And to measure the relative height in centimeter resolution is only possible when you have this high accuracy of BMP 585. So it's the right sensor for this enhanced activity and body motion tracking and enables all the use cases which were impossible before. So Thomas, what about the industrial applications you mentioned earlier? What does this solution bring to the table in these kinds of designs? Yeah, when you have a pressure sensor, it's an open cavity device, means a lot of dust, chemicals, whatever can go into the sensor and destroy it. So the BMP585 has a very thin gel layer on top of the sensor and makes it therefore resistant to water and chemicals. And it's therefore also perfectly suited for a variety of industrial use cases, such as liquid level detection and also some applications which were never suitable before. Okay, so before we go, can you remind us the technical details of the BMP-585? Yes. In summary, the BMP-585 has a small package of only 3.25 by 3.25 at a height of 1.86 millimeter. It's in a LGA package with this metal lid. On top, you see here the gel. Due to its very nice ASIC and development reached an every typical current consumption of only 1.3 microamps at 1 hertz. So makes it really possible for this battery driven devices. At the same time, an RMS noise is really low of only 0.08 Pascal. At the same time, you can use it for different digital interfaces protocols like I2C, I3C or SPI at a maximum sampling rate of 480 hertz, so in continuous mode. When we come now to the performance parameters on the right side, you see the very impressive absolute accuracy between 300 and 11 high hectopascal, so between minus 5 and 65 degrees of only 0.5 hectopascal. And here we have then a relative accuracy of only plus minus 0.06 hectopascal. So the temperature stability, we call it TCO, is uh, low as 0.5 Pascal between 300 and 1100 hectopascal in our core range from minus 5 to 65 degrees. And over 12 months, the drift is typically only plus minus 0.2 hectopascal. Excellent. Well, Thomas, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you very much, Emilia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Bosch Sensor Tech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.